Today we have a 2002 Dodge Caravan 3.3 liter. A slight misfire at cold start and gets worse as it warms up. Eventually becomes undrivable. Now after confirming the complaint, I decided to check codes. And as you can see, we have a long list here. So at this point, I decided to run a PICO diagnostics compression test, a relative compression test, just to determine the overall mechanical condition of the engine. It looks pretty good. Now after viewing the codes stored, I decided to take a quick look at the throttle position sensor and the map sensor scan data, and the values were bouncing around all over the place. They weren't making any sense. something I notice under the hood that our map sensor wire here has a uh, has been cut and a new wire crimped onto it and the old wire just hanging out there we can see there at the PCM same thing has been cut and this new wire routed to it so for some reason in the past somebody has replaced that map sensor wire so I decided to break out the picoscope and take a look at the map sensor circuit. And right away I noticed some weirdness on our what should be 5 volt reference. Okay, key off, we have 0 volts as we would expect. Now key on, showing 11 volts. Okay, but that's not right. And after a short time, that settles down to 4.2 volts. But now look what happens when the vehicle starts. We have these weird spikes here. Let's zoom in on one of those. And that looks an awful lot like an ejector pattern to me. Definitely should not be on our map sensor 5 volt reference line. Since we also had a TPS code, I decided I'd look at that along with our, our map reference voltage. This is actually our TPS signal. We have that same pattern, injector looking pattern. So at this point, it's time to look at some diagrams. Okay, so from the PCM, here's our 5 volt supply to our MAP sensor. Now through splice S116, we can see that same reference voltage is supplying the AC pressure sensor and our throttle position sensor. So they're all sharing that same 5 volt reference. But how could an injector pattern be showing up on those, on those two sensors? Let's take a look at the injector diagram. Here we have all six. Let's zoom in. Okay, now I see con connector C102 here. Supplying system voltage to each injector. And through that same connector, C102, our PCM is supplying the ground for each injector. So I think at this point, it would be a good idea to take a look at injector current to see if an injector actually syncs up with those pulses that we're seeing on our 5-volt reference. So to do that, I'm going to place our current probe before the splice, a connector C102, so that I can see the current for each injector. And I'll look at the voltage at injector number one. Look at our component locator, I see connector C102. I think it's right underneath the, the coil pack. So now let's take a look at our scope screen. Okay, so our green here is our map reference voltage. 
This car is just idling along smoothly now, and it's yeah, right around 5 volts, what we would expect. And a normal looking injector current pattern, and there's our along with our number one injector voltage. Now, knowing that I just disturbed the wiring harness around connector C102, time to go in for a visual look in that area. Now, when I pull the conduit away from the harness near connector C102, this is what I find. Now, these aren't melted, although they are fairly close to the exhaust manifold there on the, the on the back side they were in their proper retaining bracket and what you see there isn't corrosion it's just uh, the insulation just crumbling away this meant from, from the years of uh, heating and cooling I guess so at this point I decided a good repair would be to one at a time, remove each wire out of the connector and just recover it with some nice heavy walled heat shrink tubing. I'm sure that repair there will outlast the vehicle. And after doing this, I did reroute this part of the harness to keep it a little further from the heat of that exhaust manifold. Now, I'm surprised this vehicle ran at all, and it also surprises me that it didn't damage the PCM. Now, here we're zoomed in on an injector pattern. What's taking place here is the injector has system voltage to it at all times, as we can see here in the scope pattern. Now, the PCM is going to provide a ground for it, as we see here. That's when our injector is going to physically open. When that ground is taken away, we're going to get this inductive kick in the circuit. As we can see here, that reached about 65 volts. That 65 volts was directly shorted of that 5 volt supply for our reference voltage. It amazes me that PCM was able to handle that, but vehicle runs great. I put quite a few miles on it and uh, it's good. Thank you for watching.